And this handout is then a good segue to our class because, as it says there, these are really important intro topics uh, for all of organic chemistry. So we are reviewing mostly Gen Chem at this point. Um, we will see some new things in this handout. And yes, like I said, it's a really good segue into the rest of this class because these are intro topics that are extremely relevant to organic chemistry. So first off, let's start with what we do know. We are going to draw like an organic chemist today. All right, and the bottom line is that we use different ways of drawing molecules and compounds, and some, probably if not all of these, involve some sort of shorthand notation because we are drawing so much that we really need quick ways to draw. And so with shorthand, we definitely need some detail and some explanation. In general, we have four different ways to depict a molecule. We have the molecular formula. We also have Lewis structures, which we should be very familiar with. Then we also have condensed structural formula, which you guys haven't seen before, and then line angle structures. And this line angle structure, this is the Mac Daddy of them all. So as soon as we, you want to get here and get most comfortable, because this is what we're going to be using seriously day in and day out, this line angle structure. Okay, so first up, the molecular formula. <clears throat> as it says there, it just gives the number of atoms of each element in the molecule of one compound. Right, and so the downside of the molecular formula is it really doesn't tell you about structure. That's really the downside of the molecular formula. Because, as it says here, compounds can have the same molecular formula, so it really doesn't tell us much. So we'll draw another sad face for uh, reiteration, for redundancy. All right, so let's say we isolated this random compound and we threw it on the mass spectrometer, which we will learn about. And we figured out that it has a molecular formula of C3H8O. Okay, and like I said, we confirmed that. Let's say we just uh, determined its molecular weight to be 60.10 grams per mole. Okay, and then we can use our fun spectrometry. Spect type techniques to figure out that this has a molecular formula of C3H8O. Well, there are two primary structures that we're going to deal with that we could imagine fitting this molecular formula. First off, what if we had all of these main atoms in a line? Okay, again, remember that carbon likes four bonds. We fill in the carbon four bonds with hydrogen. So you'll notice that we get enough. Here's C3. H8, O, forgetting my lone pairs. Okay, so that's one way we could draw this molecular formula. This is actually propanol. Or what if that oxygen came off the middle carbon as opposed to one of the terminal carbons? How about that structure? H, H, O, H. This is also C3, H8, O. So to which structure is this molecular formula talking about? You don't know. You cannot tell by simply the molecular formula. This is actually isopropanol, or is this propanol? So as it says there, we've already seen Lewis structures, and that's what we drew here. Here are the Lewis structures. Okay. And that is where we have every single bond and every single atom involved in our drawing, okay? And this is obviously, definitely relates to structure because it is a Lewis structure. But none of this is implied in the original molecular formula. Condensed structural formula actually are new to this discussion. Okay, so these are not as easy. They're not as obvious. They're a little bit counterintuitive. But as long as you remember the Honk principle, I promise you will be fine. So it says here they do not show all the individual atoms the atoms bonded to a central atom are listed after the central atom. If there are two or more identical groups, parentheses and a subscript are used to represent all the identical groups. Non-bonding electrons are rarely shown. It says there, rem remember the Honk principle. So that'll help us in a second. So for the condensed structural formula for propanol, it would be something like this. CH3, there are two CH2s, so we can denote that with a parenthesis and then OH. Okay, notice how I don't draw the lone pairs on the OH, and as it says there in our third bullet, if there are two or more identical groups, parentheses and subscript can be used. So there we go, we have two CH2s in the molecule, so I have a parentheses and a subscript there. For isopropanol, 
the condensed structural formula would look like this. We have a CH and then we put an OH in parentheses and it follows a CH because atoms bonded to the central atom are listed after the central atom. So this CH3 group is also listed, also bound to this carbon so it's listed after. So this OH in parentheses like that just means it's bound to the one before it and so that's how we designate it when there are multiple things bound to a central, a central atom. Kind of put them in parentheses. So those are the condensed structural formula. And so for what it's worth, this is what publishers use all of the time. Even I think if you look in your book, they talk about these and they use the condensed structural formula. That's because obviously, as you can see, the Lewis structure takes up so much space. Whereas the condensed structural formula, it's condensed. So it's nice and small. So way back when, in publications, this is what they would use all the time. And it's just so hard. You can't really see this whole entire molecule from reading just these atoms, right? And so, I don't know, when I go back and read those old papers, I have a really hard time actually picturing the molecules. So let's do a few more practices. Again, I know this isn't always as easy and as intuitive, but let's see if we can do it. So let's say we were given this as our condensed structural formula. Okay, so here's the condensed. Can we go from this to the Lewis? This one shouldn't be too bad. Because remember, just remember the Honk principle. Carbon likes four bonds, so the CH3 should be pretty obvious. CH3, okay, next to a CH2. You guys will also notice patterns. There's lots of CH3s and CH2s in organic chemistry. Bound to an oxygen. Oxygen likes two bonds. There you go. And then another CH2, CH3. And don't forget your lone pairs on your Lewis structure. Okay, if you'll notice though too, we have two or more identical groups. You can see we have two like CH2, CH3s bound to that oxygen. So another way you could write this is CH3, CH2. Two, there's two of those bound to one oxygen. You can definitely write it that way as well. All right, how about going from the Lewis to the condensed? How about this one? Okay, here's your Lewis structure. Provide the condensed. Sure, the condensed would look something like this. CH3, CO, CH2, CO2H. Okay, and that definitely is somewhat counterintuitive because again, we just wrote CO. Okay, because again, we don't draw all of the individual bonds. It's kind of all just implied. And so instead, we just kind of write the atoms as they would appear kind of in a line. So it's the condensed. <clears throat> and again, this doesn't seem all that obvious, but after practicing, 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 I promise it will become easier. Okay? Because in the end, what you really want to get to are the line angle structures. Like I said, these are the mac daddy of them all. These are the quickest way to draw organic molecules. I draw these line angle structures every single day, and I promise in this class you will as well. So these are probably the most complicated, but again, practice, 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 and you will get it. Here in these line angle structures, bonds are represented by lines and carbons and their appropriate hydrogens are at every angle of the drawing and at the beginning and end of a line. Whoa. Okay. All atoms other than carbon are shown and hydrogens are only drawn if bonded to an atom other than carbon. Okay, so we don't draw CHs. Notice how many CHs there are. We're not going to draw those. Non-bonding electrons are often not drawn. Okay, those lone pairs, we usually leave them off. And these structures are what chemists use every day. Yep, the sooner you become comfortable with them, the better. All right, so let's start with that molecule propanol, which we started with way up there. Okay, the Lewis structure for propanol looks like this. Bunch of CH2s, OH. There's its Lewis, nice lone pair. Okay, the condensed. Remember we had our CH3, we had two CH2s, and then an OH. That was still pretty fast, but go ahead and time me. Here's your line angle structure. Okay, 
done. Okay, so as it says here, carbons and their appropriate hydrogens are at every angle and at the beginning and end of a line. So here's the beginning of a line, okay, so there's a carbon here, there's a carbon at every angle, at this bend there's a carbon, and there's another carbon at this bend, okay. There is not a carbon at the end of this line, because at the end of this line is an oxygen, okay, so it's not like a carbon and then an oxygen. This oxygen is bound to this carbon. Okay, so then as it says the appropriate hydrogens are also assumed. Okay, so whenever it's a bend like this, it's just a nice CH2. Just a little hitch, it's a CH2. And if it's the end of a line, it's a CH3. Okay, because the, car the carbon bonds are drawn. So this carbon here has one bond to carbon. What, how many bonds is carbon like? Carbon likes four bonds. So this carbon must then be bound to three other hydrogens. We just don't draw them. And again, this isn't as obvious, but I promise if you practice, you're going to love these things. They just are so much faster. So much faster. Okay, so how about another one that will hopefully uh, show you how beneficial these things are. What if I have something with a whole bunch of CH series? Let's use this guy as an example. Okay. It's condensed formula. It's just a bunch of CH3s, right? All around one carbon. So you could write this as CH3. There's three of them all bound around a CH because they're all identical. So again, we have identical groups with a subscript. Okay. But then go ahead and time me. Bam, bam, bam. Okay? So again, here at the end of the line, we have a CH3. At each of the ends of the lines, we have a CH3. So in this carbon, though, you can see is bound to three other carbons. But again, carbon likes four bonds. So what's that fourth bond? It's the non-drawn hydrogen. It's there. I promise it's there. We just don't draw it. Okay? It is always there. We just don't draw it because, again, this is a shorthand. It's a way to draw them faster, draw structures faster. Okay, so like I said, I know that this is overwhelming probably at this point because you're like, oh my god, every single bend is a carbon, but I promise it will become second nature. It really will. So let's do a few more examples because that's definitely not enough. Okay, how about this condensed formula? You guys have a lot more trouble going from the condensed to the Lewis, so let's do that. Let's say you had this condensed formula, CH3, CH, CH, CH2, CH3. Okay, so now we have to go from this to the Lewis structure. Okay, CH3s we've seen millions of times before, we've seen a bunch of times before already, so we should be comfortable with that, CH3. And then we have a CH, so go ahead, let's draw that. And that's bound to another CH. And so this is where it becomes less obvious, okay? We know again that carbon likes four bonds, okay? But as this carbon here, why don't we just go ahead and number it? We'll label them carbon one, carbon two, carbon one, carbon two. Carbon two here, as is drawn, only has three bonds, okay? And there's not another hydrogen bound to this carbon. It would have been listed after it. So what makes sense is it could be that fourth bond. What the condensed structure is implying here is that it's a double bond. Okay, again, just remember the honk principle. Carbon likes four bonds. So whatever the formula is missing, it must be something else. It must be another double bond, triple bond, something like that. So let's keep numbering our carbons because it may be helpful. Okay, carbon 3 is bound to another CH2, so that should be pretty easy. And then that's bound to another CH3. So you'll notice too, again, as it's written, carbon 3 also would only have three bonds. Okay, that's why it makes sense that it was also a double bond. It's reinforced by the fact that carbon 3 also needs four bonds. Okay, but then again, go ahead and time me. This is super simple. The line angle is this. There you go. There's the line angle structure. Okay, beginning of the line, CH3. There's a carbon here. 
bound to only one other carbon, so the other three bonds must be hydrogen, same with here. Here's a CH2, again just a normal hitch is a CH2. But then here you can see that this carbon, okay, it's bound to three things. Well, it's got three bonds, one, two, three. So the fourth bond is a hydrogen. Again, it's there, it's just not drawn. So same with this guy. He's got one, two, three bonds to other carbons. So that fourth bond is another hydrogen. Okay, how about a cyclic structure? So here's the Lewis for a cyclopentene. Okay, here's the Lewis structure. You can see it is cyclic. This is actually cyclopentene known. This is the Lewis. Okay, what about the condensed? Is it going to be linear out of the blue? No, it's going to be cyclic. Okay, so here is the condensed CH2, CH2. CH bound to another CH bound to a C O. It's really kind of the condensed. So you can see we still draw it cyclic. Okay, it's not like we could imply that this condensed formula is suddenly cyclic. That's not how it works. All right, if the structure is cyclic, the condensed formula will be cyclic. Okay, that's how it works. If it's linear, then it will be written linear. If it's cyclic, it will be written cyclic. Okay, we can't expect you to suddenly think that this is cyclic. Again, that's just not how it works. And the line angle here is going to be super simple. Just draw your cyclopentane, double bond. There we go. Done. Okay, so like I keep saying, I know this seems overwhelming, but I promise if you practice, again, you saw how fast I can draw this as compared to a Lewis structure. You're going to love these. Promise, you're going to love these.